Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about ick. It's a common aquarium problem, but it is often misunderstood and there is one common misunderstanding about ick that simply will not go away. I've shot videos about this in the past, but I realize that I pick up new viewers all the time, so just because I've shot a video about it before doesn't mean that everybody has seen it. And this topic has come up again, and so I think it's worth talking about, and that is the idea that ick always lives in our fish tank and it's somehow ever present down in the substrate or something like that and if conditions permit or if the fish become sick or weakened then you can have this sort of outbreak of ick. There's no truth to that whatsoever. That is 100% completely wrong. Ick does not live in your tank at all times. Ick is completely host dependent. It must be living in a fish or in the cycle of hatching out, going down into your substrate for a very short period of time, it hatches out of its egg case and then it swims back up in the water to find fish again. If it doesn't find any fish, it dies off. So if you've got a tank that has fish in it, if you've got ick in that tank, then the fish are either going to be infected with the ick and you're going to know it or you don't have ick in the tank. It's one way or the other. It can't be both. You can't have ick lying dormant in a fish tank. It doesn't have a dormant cycle. It does have an egg cycle where it's actually reproducing. Uh, it's sort of like a cyst-like pod, if you want to call it that. And while it's multiplying inside there, eventually it becomes so multitudinous that it erupts out of the cyst and, and sends all the swimmers back up into the water column. But again, this process only takes a few days in even a room temperature tank. Uh, if you've got a tank that's up at tropical temperatures, you know, 80, 82 degrees, it only takes a couple days for this whole process to happen. So either the, the ick is cycling through and it's infecting your fish and then it's reproducing and then it's reinfecting your fish. Either that's happening or you don't have ick in the tank. There is no way that the ick can just go dormant and wait and wait for fish to become susceptible to it again or something like that. That does not happen, cannot happen. What can happen and what often happens and what usually gets confused or mistaken for ick is a organism, I'm not sure what kind of organism it is, but it doesn't actually attack the fish themselves. It eats bacteria and it's called, I, I personally call it epistolus. I have heard it pronounced as epistylus but I really think that that was somebody pronouncing it phonetically. So I'm not 100% sure on how it's actually pronounced. I've heard it pronounced epistylus, which is exactly how it's spelled, or I would say epistolus. So whatever it's called, I'm going to refer to it as epistolus. And it's some type of organism. Again, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's a, you know, paras or a, a bacteria or whatever, but it's some type of organism that eats bacteria and it lives in your tank. It lives in everybody's tank. Um, I'll, I'll, put, I'll attach a link down below. There's a really good article I read about it. If I can find that article, uh, I will put a link to it and you can read all about the uh, epistolus. It's, it's, it's worth reading. It's worth knowing about if you've ever experienced ick or you've got white spots on your fish and you don't know where they came from. If you've mysteriously got white spots that came out of nowhere, it's more than likely this epistolus stuff. And it feeds on bacteria and it will actually attach to fish, but it only uses the fish as like a housing or an anchor point to move around through the water eating bacteria. The same way you can think about like barnacles on a whale or something like that. It's not feeding on the whale. It's just using the whale as a way to get around to take it to more food. And the epistolus will do the same thing on your fish. So if you've got a tank that's got real high bacterial loads, if you've got poor circulation, low oxygenation in the water, basically just sort of an unkempt kind of dirty tank, that causes the conditions for this epistolus to just have a feeding frenzy. It feeds on all this bacteria in the water. And so it begins growing into colonies that appear on the fish as these white clumps and tufts. And, and it looks very similar to ick. But if you know what you're looking at and you know what you're looking for, 
you can tell the difference between ick and epistolates. And the number one difference is if it just pops up out of nowhere, you haven't put any new fish in the tank, you haven't put any new substrate from somebody else's tank. If you haven't done anything to your tank and you suddenly, after months of everything being fine, you suddenly have white spots popping up on your fish, it is not ick. It has got to be something else. And again, that something else is most likely the epistolus or epistylus. Again, check down below. I will put a link if I can find that article. Um, I believe uh, Wallstad did a uh, study on it and found that it is pretty much present in all of our aquariums or most of our aquariums or it was present on all the fish that were examined or something. Again, I'll find that link and I'll put a, a link down below to a very good article about it. But ick does not live in our tanks. That's a, that's a myth that needs to be debunked. It just does not do that. It's either on your fish and you know you've got ick in your tank or it's not in your tank. There, there's no dormant stage to ick. So leave your comments down below. I'd be interested to hear them. I'm sure I'll be shooting this video again in six months or a year. So make sure you subscribe and you won't miss when that one comes around again or anything else in between. So thanks for watching this one and I'll see you real soon in the next one.